हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू इंडिया स्पीक्स डेली दिस इज रति हियर सो इन टूडेज वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द इशू ऑफ द राइज ऑफ हिंदू फोबिया ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड एंड डिस्पाइट द फैक्ट दैट इट्स सो ब्लेटेंट इन योर फेस एंड ऑब्वियस द इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी इज कंप्लीटली साइलेंट ऑन द इशू एंड इट हैज इन डन एनी थिंग येट टू रेकग्नाइज द थ्रेट ऑफ हिंदू फोबिया लीव अलोन काउंटर इट and forget about the west and the international community even india has done precious little at the policy level or at the level of the government to counter hindu phobia to recognize the threat posed by hindu phobia so in my video i'm going to give you concrete examples to explain why and how hindu phobia exists and then finally my proposition is that hindu phobia needs to be recognized by the united nations the united nations needs to follow an anti hindu phobia day and the international organizations the whole architecture of the international organizations the global world needs to recognize the threat posed by hindu phobia so that strict action can be taken you know against all sorts of discrimination faced by hindus all over the world Recently former RBI governor Raghuram Rajan made a very controversial statement regarding India's growth rate. He basically said that India is dangerously close to the Hindu growth rate as the country sees limited investment in private sector, high interest rates and decreasing global growth. So Raghuram Rajan was basically implying that India's growth rate is low India's growth rate is dangerously low because it's a Hindu country because uh, Hindu is the majority religion here and people follow the Hindu way of life so in a way Raghuram Rajan was essentially blaming India's low growth rate to its Hindu way of life now it's surprising that such a blatantly hindu phobic statement can be made in the 21st century by a person of such a stature by such a senior economist but the good thing is that this time it didn't go unnoticed uh, many media channels many media outlets in fact including uh, newspapers called out the blatant hindu phobia of raghuram rajan's statement in fact an indian think tank by the name of observer research foundation which is a very famous well known think tank and they do research in the area of you know geopolitics international affairs uh, but observer research foundation specifically carried an article critiquing the inherent hindu phobia in raghuram rajan's hindu growth rate statement and calling him out for infecting for infesting economics with hindu phobia Raghuram Rajan however is not the first person he's not the first economist to use this blatantly hindu phobic term the hindu growth rate in fact the term hindu rate of growth was coined in 1978 by an indian economist by the name of raj krishna and he coined this term in 1978 to describe the slow annual growth rate of india between 1950s and 1980s and not just that he coined this term but international organizations including the united nations as well as the world bank kind of you know lent legitimacy to this blatantly discriminatory derogatory anti hindu term by way of not sort of you know saying against it by not criticizing this term so in a way the international organizations at that time lent a certain kind of legitimacy to this term due to which it you know it sort of continues to be used in economics this term called hindu growth rate you know also there's one more thing a lot of uh, marxist scholars a lot of marxist criticism of you know indian society indian culture uh, and indian economy basically insinuates that indian society is backward india is not progressing indian people are poor because of the hindu way of life so they attribute all of india's economic problems to hinduism saying that because you know people follow this religion which is uh, backward and which is anti science which is anti progressive that's why hindus are stuck that's why india is stuck in a time warp so this has been a you know sort of predominant uh, predominant strain of leftist marxist criticism of indian economy that blame it all on hinduism and i think rajiv malhotra ji also has picked up this point in his books you know this rather uh, irrational sort of like insinuation this kind of propaganda to link india's lack of economic uh, progress for a long time to to its hindu way of life 
So like I said, it's shocking that Raghuram Rajan can actually make such a statement with so much of blatant internet Hinduphobia and he, he can actually get away with that statement. Now just imagine, you know, does he have the guts and courage to make such a statement, to coin such terms in context of, you know, something like a Islamic growth rate or a Christian growth rate? You can imagine the repercussions, you know, if he even dares to make such statements. So he's not that foolish, you know, he would not say something like that. But in context of Hindus, Hindus become convenient scapegoats for everybody because, you know, Hindus are tolerant and most of the Hindus are, you know, forever guilt-ridden about their supposed Brahma Brahminical past. So Hindus are like really tolerant and that's why... Uh, Hindu phobia is not just on the rise, but you know, there is this silence about it. It's shouted in silence and you cannot even raise your voice against Hindu phobia. Uh, such is the global climate at the moment. This is just one example of a statement by a senior, senior figure against Hindu phobia. But you know, there's so many, uh, so many Hindu phobic statements are made day in and day out in India, be it on TV channels, in TV news, debates, on social media platforms, be it on Twitter or on Facebook, in public discourse, in public spaces, in, you know, all sorts of gatherings, even in books, even in academic books about, you know, uh, Hinduism are full of Hindu phobic statements. And why is this happening? This is happening because Hindus are not united. Hindus are scattered and we don't have any Hindu organizations or Hindu, you know, governments lobbying at the level of the United Nations to recognize the existence of Hindu phobia. To give you another example of Hindu phobia, the United States passed this blatant Hindu phobic law called the Seattle caste legislation recently. I done a separate story on the issue of Seattle anti-caste legislation. So basically, uh, the Seattle City Council, you know, passed this law to ban caste discrimination. So essentially singing, singling out Hindus and insinuating that Hindus from South Asia are a bigoted law. They practice caste discrimination. Caste discrimination is at the roots of Hinduism. And first, these guys used to practice caste discrimination in India. But the, now they are bringing it to the U.S. society. So the problem is that the U.S. already has a lot of laws banning discrimination of all kinds and all sorts. So just singling out, you know, one religion, one community and, you know, having this kind of uh, law which brings them under the scanner and which uh, essentially calls for the, you know, 24 into 7 vigilance. And using this law, they can be harassed any time. So it's inherently Hindu phobic, the Seattle anti-caste legislation. And similar bills are being tabled in other states of the US. And just imagine, you know, if these kind of laws are passed in other states of the US and if other countries also start passing laws like this, targeting the Hindu diaspora over there, then Hindus would be, you know, uh, sort of um, completely marginalized and, you know, their existence would be in danger all over the world. Why? Because firstly, uh, you know, the issue of caste, raking up the issue of caste like this sort of makes, uh, sort of, you know, uh, the Hindi com Hindu community divided again on the lines of caste. They'll be looking at each other with suspicion that this person is low caste, I am high caste, he's low caste, or, you know, that sort of thing. And secondly, uh, it kind of, uh, you know, essentially creates a ground for discrimination and hatred against Hindus and a ground for blatant Hindu phobia uh, because other communities, you know, locals in those countries would be looking at Hindus with suspicion. They would be wary of hiring them that, hey, these guys practice caste discrimination, so I should stay away from them. So you can, you can see, you know, how uh, this kind of Hindu phobia is being insinuated even in developed societies like America, even, you know, targeting relatively uh, affluent affluent Hindus in countries like the US. Then there is the issue of temple attacks. You know the number of temples that are attacked routinely in countries where Hindus are a minority in countries like Islamic majority countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh. Nobody even talks about that. There's no record and the mainstream media not only conveniently hides this information but also tries to suppress the news outlets, you know, which try to give away this information. So you cannot even imagine the number of temple attacks in these countries. I think perhaps a separate story is needed to do justice to this issue. But now even in developed countries, you know, like uh, the UK, Australia, Canada, attacks on Hindu temples are blatantly increasing. You see something in the news, you know, every fort fortnight. If we just talk about Australia itself, then since January this year, at least four Hindu temples have been attacked in Australia. And recently, the Australian Prime Minister visited India and he assured Prime Minister, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, that he would himself look into this issue that Hindus in 
Australia feel secure and the temples won't be attacked. But then, you know, immediately after uh, after his visit, I think just two, three days after his visit, the uh, one of one of the Indian cons- consulates in Australia was attacked by pro-Khalistani elements. So if this is not Hindu phobia, then what else is? Now, this is the talk of foreign countries. But in India, if you even, you know, say anything against, uh, if you dare to raise your voice against anything that is being said against Hindus or, you know, you try to defend your own religion, you're immediately branded as non-secular Hindutvavadi and Sanghi. You know, non-secular Hindutvavadi, Sanghi, these are the favorite terms, favorite terminology of the left liberal cabal. And they try to shame any Hindu who tries to raise their voice against, you know, against all sorts of crap which is being said about the Hindu community, Hindu religion, uh, Hindu culture. So, you know, it's like in India, people of other religions can say anything and everything about Hinduism. They have all freedom of expression. But the moment a Hindu tries to just, you know, counter those arguments, he or she is not even, you know, insulting those religions or saying anything about their religions but the moment he or she tries to you know sort of protect his own religion and counter those arguments and defend their religion they're immediately branded as non-secular and intolerant i do not understand this kind of logic but the good thing is you know with the rise of hindu activism in india and also in other countries like the us for example where a lot of hindu american organizations are very active uh, because of the rise of Hindu activism, now the term Hindu phobia is at least appearing on the internet. And, you know, even though we are far from recognizing uh, Hindu phobia, phobia legally or at the level of international organizations, but we are at least talking about it. If you Google the term Hindu phobia on the internet, you're going to see a lot of results. I think this wouldn't have been the scenario a couple of years back. But now even Wikipedia has an entry. It has quite a detailed entry on Hindu phobia. And on Instagram, if you use the hashtag Hinduphobia, Instagram has more than 37,000 posts, you know, using the hashtag Hinduphobia. Now, I know 37,000 is not a huge number, but it's at least a beginning, you know, uh, regarding an issue which nobody really talks about. I think Rajiv Malhotraji, you know, is perhaps the first person who has used the term Hinduphobia in a wider context, especially in terms of academic discourse. One of his earlier books titled Academic Hinduphobia exposes a lot of uh, scholars you know from the western academia and uh, these really sort of famous scholars from very elite universities of the west not just western scholars he also exposes a lot of uh, indian scholars you know who work at these universities like harvard or other you know these really elite and famous universities uh, and these are the people you know who are considered authorities all over the world on subjects like hinduism uh, sanskrit vedas upanishads uh, history of ancient india and all that so rajiv malhotra exposes the you know the inherent uh, a sort of missionary propaganda in their works and their blatant uh, Hindu phobic uh, stance. Now, you know, it's kind of unknowing and uh, scary to even think of this fact that most of the academic academic discourse related to uh, Hinduism has in fact been produced by people who are blatantly Hindu phobic and Hindu haters themselves. So which is why it's so important. And it's good that it's happening that Rajiv Malhotraji and also a lot of other scholars are now raising their voice against and, you know, challenging this sort of uh, vicious narrative and countering it, you know, with a counter narrative. The United Nations has recently declared 15th March as the International Day Against Islamophobia. So this year itself, on the 15th of March, the first ever anti-Islamophobia day was observed all over the world. Now, what made the UN recognize, you know, an anti-Islamophobia day? Obviously, because the OIC countries, as well as a lot of other Islamic countries, including Pakistan, aggressively lobbied with the UN, UN you know, to sort of uh, recognize the existence of Islamophobia and observe this kind of a day. But when it comes to Hindu phobia, forget about, you know, lobbying with the with the international organizations like United Nations for observing an anti-Hindu phobia day. We do not have any discussions, you know, about issues uh, related to discrimination against Hindus or historical issues of persecution of Hindus in the United Nations. We do not have any such discussions. You know, issues like the Kashmir issue, for example, are routinely raked in the United Nations by the likes of Pakistan and China. But how many discussions have we really seen about the issue of, you know, Kashmiri pundits in the UN? None, I think. 
Uh, so the whole international discourse is, you know, sort of biased in a way that not only it is completely silent on the issue of Hindu phobia, but it, you know, completely delegitimizes any efforts to even speak about Hindu phobia by branding, you know, uh, any kind of Hindu nationalist movements as extreme right wing by branding it as neo Nazis. You see this kind of you know discourse in the international media all the time. You know branding uh, Modi government as ultra nationalist and this and that and the neo Nazi t- terminology especially uh, used a lot. So the strategy is to uh, defame the Hindu nationalist movement so much in advance that you know the the victim becomes the perpetrator then the victim is in advance portrayed as the perpetrator so that the victim will actually have no ground to even argue that they're a victim because they've been already already portrayed as a perpetrator by the international media now what is the solution to all this the solution to all this is that hindus need to become more political by political i do not mean that hindus need to participate in political movements or form a political party but i simply mean to say that that you know we need to become more assertive in terms of raising our voice in terms of speaking against you know uh, against issues against things that attack hindu religion hindu customs hindu culture we also need to be more confident about you know in terms of using the word hindu phobia widely in our day to day discourse especially on social media posts you know uh, the more this word is used on the internet and you know the more number of uh, tweets, hashtags, you know, the more we have the usage of the word Hindu phobia, the more traction, you know, uh, this movement against the discrimination of Hindus all over the world is going to gain. And of course, the governments have to be pressurized uh, uh, to do this, you know, because it's the work of the citizens to pressurize the government. So the governments also need to be, you know, uh, sort of more proactive in this issue. And the government needs to take up the you know issue of hindu phobia at an international level and pressurize in organizations like the united uh, nations to recognize the existence of, of hindu phobia you know to call out against uh, discriminatory laws like the seattle anti caste uh, uh, legislation and to speak out strongly against the uh, singling out of you know the v- increasing victimization of the hindu diaspora in western countries so guys that's it for today thank you so much for listening uh, bye for now